Hello everyone, my name is Jax, you are watching Jax Plays and welcome to Men of War 2 and the Basic Trainings mini-series. Today we're going to have a look at um, piercing. Um, in the last episode we covered the reconnaissance, which um, went as well as stealth games usually go for me to be quite honest. Um, we had to rerun that a couple of times, uh, but I kept that in the video as, you know, let's watch my failures uh, instead of cutting it out. So today we are going to look at armor piercing. So this mission will teach you how to estimate your chances when piercing armor and how to combat enemy armored vehicles. Excuse me, sorry about that. I just had to mute my mic as I had a bit of a cough. So we are the uh, sixth self-propelled artillery unit. Assuming that's artillery, it makes more sense than it is. I'm really enjoying my time with Men of War 2. Um, I have to wonder how much different difference it's offering as opposed to what Company of Heroes is doing, uh, particularly with Company of Heroes 3. Um, but still, it is great to see this series uh, make a return. Brings me back to playing it back in 2004. Oh, that's a nice little camo you paint take, unit. Take, everyone take cover. It has a little gun at the back as well. Ooh. <clears throat> hey, to rifle man, to right flank now. Wait for it. Not the AT guns. That's pretty cool. Target immobilized. Hey, to rifle man, disengage. This is an SPG target now. Light guns and anti-tank rifles often lack the armor penetration to hit the hulls of heavy vehicles. However, they can damage and disable some of these vehicles, individual modules such as tracks, gun barrels, wheels or mounted equipment. It's sometimes more useful to immobilize an enemy by breaking one of its tracks. For piercing through hulls, use HP air guns. Armor piercing and subcaliber shells work best against armored targets. If they deal damage after penetra they deal damage after penetrating the armor. If the target's armor is weak, you can use high explosives or HE ordnance. These have a lower armor penetration but deal more damage once they're past the actual armor. Your current target is a well-armored heavy tank. Firing a 75 mm HE shell at it is pointless. It's better to use an armor piercing shell and hit the tank in one of its weak spots. Look for vulnerabilities. Looking for vulnerabilities is best done in direct control mode. Press E or hold down control to take control. So, select the tank on. To get a better idea of what your gun is capable of, take direct control of the SPG and aim it at the enemy tank. Let's press E. The crosshair is a cursor to use to direct the barrel of the gun. The white circle shows the area of the shell the area the shell can hit. The color of the crosshair indicates the chance to penetrate armor. The armor penetration marker can have different colors. Red with a low chance to penetrate, yellow with a medium chance, and green with a high chance. However, bear in mind that the shell can hit a different point within a spread radius with a different likelihood of penetration. I may struggle with this, uh, I'm colorblind. So red would be okay, yellow and green, depending on how they're depicted in the game, I may actually struggle. So we'll have to wait and see. This video shows how the armor penetration marker works in direct control, camera follow mode. Let's have a watch of this. Okay. So it's showing red. I'm assuming that one's supposed to be yellow. And if that one's green, yeah, I am going to really struggle with that. Okay, let's give it a go anyway. Thankfully, it is only a tutorial. Oh, boy. 
Several factors affect the armor penetration value. Distance to target. The penetration capability of an armor piercing shell decreases with distance. The closer the target is, the higher the penetration stat. It's important to find a balanced distance at which you'll be guaranteed to hit the target, but without taking any unnecessary risks. The target's autonomy. The thickness of a tank's armor is not uniform. Some of the plates or parts can be weakly armored and thus piercing a and thus, and thus pierced with a well-armed shot even from long distance. The angle of the shell to armor contact. The smaller the angle is, the more armor the shell has to penetrate, increasing the likelihood, likelihood of a ricochet. Uh, the aim, aim as close to the right angle impact as possible. So trying to hit them full on as much as we can. Okay, was it shifting Q? Uh, shoot. Control and Q. Okay. Let's go back to the tank in a minute. And the armor types looks like it. I think I'm missing in something in terms of controls here. Wasn't there a view that I could go examine? No, not examine. Attack. I date take direct control. We're not gonna punch through it from here. Gotta get closer. Um, I'm gonna assume that's AP that I'm loading in there. Yes, we hit its track, which should disable it. sure there was a scoped view. Um, can't remember how to get into it. Okay, maybe let's go for a bit of a... Uh... So we hit the track again. I'm pretty sure I could do this a lot more efficiently, but again... If there's a colour indicator, I am not doing my best in terms of actually hitting it or seeing it. So what's... Um, it track damaged again. Ah, there we go. There we go. Shift Q. Okay. Can we stick one? Yeah, we can stick down the hole now. Um, so if I then go to high explosive, now we pierce that hole. No, we didn't get anything for that one. Oh boy. Again, definitely struggling with the colours. Okay, so we're definitely getting the hits now. There we go. To destroy armour vehicles, you must factor in the armour piercing and capabilities of your available anti-tank weaponry. 
And that was that. Well, thank you very much for watching. That was a bit of a struggle for me. First of all, remembering the actual controls to get into the tank itself, and then certainly struggling with the armor penetration uh, values under the color itself. But thank you for sticking with me. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.